Every year, May through June, from the coast of Maine all the way south to the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, there's a giant emergence, a migration, if you will, from the depths of the ocean coming towards the shores of North America up onto the beaches. You might know what I'm talking about. It's the Lemuridae migration, horseshoe crabs to you and I. And, uh, well, it's kind of happening right now. Why do they come up onto the shores? Of course, to mate and to lay eggs. Major, here now. These animals have not changed very much over the past 400 to 450 million years. And, well, the reason for that being, their design works. I mean, they're perfectly suited for the environments they live in. Many people will find this appendage right here to be a little bit intimidating because it resembles the sting of, well, a stingray uh, or perhaps a scorpion. But this is pretty much harmless. This is used specifically for hoping to flip themselves back over when they do find themselves on the back, although much of the time is still unsuccessful. And it also helps them to aid in, you know, maneuvering and navigating once they're out to sea. Interestingly enough, this limb here is actually referred to as a telson. And if that word sounds familiar to you, well, that's because that's what we call the sting of a scorpion, the telson. And that's where it gets pretty fascinating because horseshoe crabs are not very related to actual crabs. They're closer related to scorpions than they are to crabs. And uh, I really get a kick out of the fact that that's called a telson. I wonder if that's why. Horseshoe crabs are arthropods with seven pairs of legs, including a pair of chelicerae. Two of those legs, the first pair, are basically chelicerae. And that's what they use to, well, feed themselves with, you know, break apart their food and deliver it to the mouth. The last pair of legs are modified in a, like a leaf or a fan configuration, and they're used for propulsion or pushing them, you know, in the sand or even in the water itself. These cool looking plates you see are actually five pairs of book gills that they use for breathing. The spines along the back and sides help to protect from predators and possibly help aid in steering while swimming. If predators don't get them first, their lifespan is generally anywhere from 20 to 40 years, but more frequently it's around 20 years or so. This one here is a male, and it's a mature male, because if you look at this front pair of legs, they've got these swollen bulbs on them, kind of like a boxing glove. Similar to how male spiders, you know, their pedipalps will swell up once they reach sexual maturity. So these swollen or enlarged feet, I guess, um, are actually used to hook on to the, the females during mating. It just makes it a little bit easier. And that's actually kind of interesting because some you know, male spiders or tarantulas have little hooks on their front legs to help hold the female's legs in place. Uh, that's another story. Something else I want to show you on this horseshoe crab before I, you know, set them free is they actually have a mouth between their legs. Uh, it's not up front like you would expect it to be. And they also have a pair of ventral eyes right down here at the bottom. And uh, that's to help them understand if they're upside down in the ocean. They can swim fine upside down, but it lets them orientate themselves. And of course, they have five other eyes on the top of their, their carapace. They have two large compound eyes, and those are ones that are the most obvious. And you can see two more simple eyes towards the front. Okay, so this massive horseshoe crab is a female and she weighs a ton holy cow is she heavy maybe she has eggs in her making her weigh so much but it could be her sheer size she is big her carapace is super super thick and solid holy cow so notice the pair of legs there that it doesn't have that clasper
Horseshoe crabs spend the majority of their life in intertidal zones and areas just offshore, you know, walking along the sandy bottoms and search for food and stuff. However, they can swim if they need to. Immature horseshoe crabs spend the first few years of their lives in the safer areas such as intertidal flats, estuaries, and bay zones of, you know, the ocean. And that helps shelter them from some of the bigger predators and, of course, the harsher, you know, ebbs and flows of the ocean itself. But once a horseshoe crab is about 10 years of age, it has reached sexual maturity. That is the time that they come up on shore, usually on full moon nights throughout May and June, to deposit their eggs or to find a mate in order to fertilize her eggs. And, you know, an individual female can lay as much as 4,000 eggs in one sitting, and they can continue to do this multiple times. During winter months, the adult horseshoe crabs generally migrate out towards the continental shelf where the water is deeper, you know, a bit warmer, a bit less susceptible to the rapid changes in temperature, and of course the, the splashes of waves and, you know, water currents. While horseshoe crabs are born survivors, they still have tremendous mortality rates. You know, without even mentioning all the predators that they have to survive, their breeding process, well, it replenishes their population, is also, well, the largest impact on their population. Many of them succumb to just flipping over and eventually dying on their backs, not to mention some of the terrestrial predators that will seek them out. Of course, once it's an adult horseshoe crab, these things can be as much as two feet long. Their carapace is pretty massive. In fact, it's so tough that generally only large sea turtles and sharks can actually bite through it. However, if they get flipped over on their back, it's open season for some of the, you know, raptors, the seagulls, foxes, raccoons, and all sorts of predators like that. But it's the most fragile stage of horseshoe crabs that is the most vulnerable, and that is the eggs. Like I said, they lay as much as 4,000 eggs in one session, and that's because so many things like to feed on their eggs. In fact, many of the bird species around me right now will actually feast on the horseshoe crab eggs, and it can play an integral part of their life cycle. The horseshoe crab eggs here, right, at the Atlantic coast, generally go on to feed birds, fish, turtles, and all sorts of other things, and it just goes higher and higher up the food chain. So in a way, much of the life on Earth depends on the horseshoe crabs and this giant migration in May and June. Horseshoe crabs provide a great food source for all sorts of animals, whether it's bird, fish, or mammal, but they also provide a form of locomotion and safety for other animals such as limpets and barnacles. Not only am I rescuing a horseshoe crab, but I'm rescuing several barnacles and a bunch of limpets. Wow. Horseshoe crabs benefit the animal kingdom, but of course they benefit the human race also. And that's strictly because they are predominantly used for testing the quality of medications to make sure that they are not you know, contaminated specimens or contaminated medicines and also for researching other medicines and treatments of things such as cancer even. And, you know, a huge reason for that is the fact that they have a copper-based blood, unlike ours, which is iron-based, right? And that blood, you know, is a hemolymph similar to the tarantulas. It's a bluish blood. It's not very great at clotting, but their immune system is an incredible feat of evolutionary history. And let's say uh, an amoeba site or a bacterial infection infiltrates their immune system or gets into their, you know, their inner workings, well, their blood will actually form, it'll clot around the bacteria and become like a gel. So it isolates the bacteria and it actually starts to combat it and completely eliminate it through really interesting scientific ways. But um, I don't really want to talk about that right now because I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, I don't remember it entirely but there's so much information out there about their immune system because it's used globally for medicine. 
almost all medicines have actually been tested with the blood of horseshoe crabs. We're right on the cusp of coming up with a synthetic alternative to horseshoe crab blood, but until then, many horseshoe crabs you know, around the world are actually captured and milked for their blood. And you know, it was believed that it didn't really cause any harm to the horseshoe crabs and people would let them go afterwards. Uh, but we're starting to find out now that like, yeah, actually it is causing some damage and many of them do wind up dying and stuff because they're just being, it's too much of a strain on their system to have so much blood extracted. You can actually find countless hours or even days worth of content out on the internet discussing specifically the medical benefits of horseshoe crabs. Horseshoe crabs are omnivores. They will feed on, you know, other crabs. They'll feed on bacteria, detritus, you know, uh, live and decaying organic matter. And they'll actually search most of that stuff out through the sandy bottoms of the ocean. Horseshoe crabs will dig burrows to lay their eggs. And those burrows can actually be up to two feet long. And like I was saying, when they come up on shore, they'll dig a burrow and deposit the eggs within that burrow. One of the coolest things I ever saw in nature was actually horseshoe crab eggs. And, uh, you know, it was in northern Delaware, and I actually found this, uh, a comb jelly. And, you know, those are the ones that have the little rainbow panels, so it looks like they're lighting up. And I've only seen, like, three or four live jellyfish in my life so far. And I was extremely excited to find that. But I was trying to film it. It was proving to be nearly impossible. I tried to dig a hole in the sand to fill it up with water. And while I was doing that, I noticed, you know, hundreds of horseshoe crab eggs. And the rest is history there. Wow. Looking at this right now, I can't help but to have images of the beaches of Normandy or somewhere in the Pacific conjured in my mind. I have to admit, it's a little dramatic. Now, all the horseshoe spawn or eggs are giving these birds enough nutrition. They want to double their weight for the journey to the Arctic. And uh, that's where they'll breed. That's where the birds will breed. They'll do that up in the tundra regions. Um, so the horseshoe crabs are pretty much feeding the birds for that journey. Uh, amazing stuff. But there is definitely a storm that I didn't realize was coming, and it's definitely coming. Bear in mind that right now we might be seeing a ton of horseshoe crabs that perished. You've got to consider the amount of eggs being deposited on these beaches. At least 4,000 eggs per individual, if not four times that amount. I'm not sure why, but all the ones I'm finding stranded are males. This is the fifth one, right? No, I did find one female, a large female. This cycle has continued for a few hundred million years. In essence, horseshoe crabs play such a vital role in the food chain globally that should they vanish, Life from migratory birds to ocean inhabitants, terrestrial mammals, even human beings worldwide would greatly suffer their loss. So I've mentioned several times that the adult males will have claspers on their front legs. Well, now you actually see what they're being used for. They'll actually clasp onto the female, and one, that helps reduce the odds of being separated by male-to-male -male competition or, you know, other suitors that try to, you know, rush in and take her. I mean, she selected him, right? Uh, but the other reason, of course, is, you know, the splash zone in these waves. It can separate them, and then it can take them God knows how long to find each other again. Of course, similar to frogs and, well, crabs, um, you know, the female will deposit her eggs, and then the male will fertilize them. And uh, so I don't know if that already happened or is happening now, but it's pretty cool to see this. Wow, I mean, how cool is that? 
anyways, thank you so much for watching. And if you watched it this far, why not hit that like button? And if you haven't already, definitely hit that subscribe button because it tells the algorithm that you like my content and it allows me to get out to environments such as this one and produce videos like the one you just saw. Once again, thank you very much. I'm Chris Ignato, and I'll see you somewhere else.